Hey boys and girls, welcome to Kids Connection! My name is Johnny, I am your host for the program today. And this is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. <sighs> Mr. Zorik is not available today, so he asked me to host the program one more time. <sighs> and I am so happy! I am so happy to see you, and I'm so happy because today is Sabbath, and I'm so happy because today we are going to have a special program, and I am going to be uh, be making baking a cake right here in Kids Connection program, so I get to share that with you guys, okay? So stick around, and let's get another program started. But to get our program started today, we're going to be talking about something very important. But before that, let's get our song of the day. I have decided to follow Jesus. Sing with us. song did you like it good 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 well i invite you to bow your head so we can talk to jesus now dear jesus thank you so much for this beautiful sabbath we ask that you be with us as we worship your name today be with all the boys and girls in jesus name we pray amen well kids welcome to kids connection i am johnny your host for today and let me tell you a secret. I want to buy a boat. Don't tell anybody. Yes, I want to buy a boat. A boat. Yes, a boat. You know why? Well, I want to buy a boat so I can do what these missionaries are doing all the way in the Amazon River in Brazil. Let's watch our missionary story where they have a church on the boat. The 
Amazon River is a source of food and income for many. As you travel along the river, you can see many communities along the banks. Here you will find one quarter of our planet's fresh water supply. That's why boats are necessary for transportation. There are entire communities with either no knowledge of the Bible or no churches. Adventist here found a fitting way to reach more than 10,000 communities. Thanks to your past contributions to the 13th Sabbath offering, the Floating Church was built. This custom boat is a church that carries the pastor's family. It often works alongside the Adra Luzero boats to provide health care and hope to people. The main goal behind the Floating Church project is to reach places we typically find hard to visit. The Floating Church offers an infrastructure for a pastor or Bible worker, a captain, and others to live aboard. There's also an auditorium where people from the community can come to listen to the Word of God. The Floating Church has an auditorium that seats 120 people. It's a comfortable space for people to come and learn about God. I know what difficulties they face and how hard it is for the gospel message to reach the distant communities along the Amazon River. This touched me in a special way. I was moved by the prospect of this project. It was encouraging to imagine how far this boat could go to reach the Riverside families. This boat also has onboard apartments for the crew. Reno Guerra is both the pastor and the captain of the boat. He and his wife, Natalia, accepted God's call to bring hope and healing to the region. As soon as the boat docks, it's received with a lot of joy. People are happy to see the floating church because it is a beautiful and unique boat. Pastor Reno sounds the horn to catch the attention of the people who come curiously to look. So the pastor invites the people to a church program. He enters a community where the work already has begun and calls the people to come inside the floating church. The boat is usually docked for 60 days as they talk about family, health, and community well-being. In the first year of service, two new churches were established through the floating church. This past June, the Gutierrez Church opened as a result of the missionary project. This is the first daughter church plant of the Floating Church Project. The church that floats is the mother of all the traditional church structures that are built along the banks of the Amazon River. Indeed, miracles are happening along the Amazon. We noticed that this project changes what people think about God and about the Adventist Church. There is change in their society. People become calmer, happier, more content and united. The church helps the community to realize how they can work together as one body to develop social projects for themselves. I believe many souls will be reached through this boat. This boat can reach places where even radio signals don't travel to reach hearts. We pray that this will be managed and used well for the gospel to reach the farthest places in the Amazon. We have the opportunity to navigate rivers and oceans as part of our mission to reach unreached people groups. Please pray for the floating church and the many missionaries involved in flooding the Amazon with hope. And thank you for supporting projects like these through the 13th Sabbath offering. Okay, okay, well, maybe not buying a boat, but one way that I can help is with my offerings. Don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link so they can too help the missionaries with the offerings. Thank you for your support. Kids, today I am excited to host the program because I want to show you that I can bake a cake. Do you guys 
help mom and dad bake and cake sometimes? Is it fun? Yes, I know it is. So let me get a couple of ingredients and I'm gonna bake a cake right here in Kids Connection. Hold on. First, first, I'm gonna bring the flowers here. Hold on, let me get the eggs. I gotta be careful. Here comes the eggs. Perfect, perfect. Well, let's see what else. Uh, yes, yes, I am missing the cake mix. Hold on. Here it is, the box with the instructions. So now all I have to do is follow the instructions. Let me get a bowl. Okay, so here is a bowl. Let's go ahead and get it started. Let me bring the bowl close to the table here. Here we go, here we go. Okay, so now it tells me that I need to get some flour. So here is the flour. Let me, let me get some. too much flour but it's okay because I like to make my own recipe okay so now it tells me that I need two eggs well I think two eggs is too much so I'm going to go and put one egg Was I supposed to crack the egg first? Well, it doesn't say here in the instructions to crack the egg. So, I guess not. Just the egg. Uh, let's see. Put butter. I, I don't have butter. Well, I guess it's okay for me to bake this cake without butter. Okay, so now let me, let me get my bowl, mixing bowl. Okay, so now the instructor says, go ahead and beat for two minutes. Beat. Okay, let's beat this thing. I wonder why it tells me to beat it. Let's see, yeah, beat for two minutes. So this is the best I can do. Beating, 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 beating. Beating, beating, oh yes. Okay. So, hmm, that's strange. It doesn't look like a cake, but oh well. I, I, I didn't follow all the instructions as it said on the box, but let's, let's see what happens. So, let's see. After beating for two minutes, Take it to the oven. Okay, kids. Wait. 
It's telling me to put chocolate inside. But I don't have chocolate. Well, I guess I'm going to make a chocolate cake without a chocolate and without butter because I don't have it. Take it to the oven. Let's see what happens. Oh, by the way, kids, look at my cake. Beautiful. Uh, I think it's going to be a little crunchy because of the egg. But it's okay. I'll be right back. Uh, kids, I got bad news. My chocolate cake without chocolate and without butter did not turn out so good. No! Why, why, why? Why did my chocolate look like that? After all this hard work, my chocolate cake without chocolate looks like this. I can't believe it! Why do you think my chocolate cake without chocolate didn't turn out good? Well, I, I follow somewhat the instructions in the box. I put the, some of the ingredients inside the bowl and I beat it for two minutes, then I took it to the oven. That, well, okay, I, okay, I, okay. I guess it, it's not telling, I, I guess it's not telling me to do just that. Oh, there are other things that I didn't do. I guess I didn't follow all the instructions. Do you think it's good to follow instructions? Why do we follow instructions to bake a cake? Do you follow instructions when baking a cake with mom and dad? It is important. Well, I guess I learned my lesson today and I have to follow instructions to make sure the cake is going to turn out just right. In today's story, in our lesson, we are going to learn about some instructions given to some people and how important it was for them to follow those instructions. Boys and girls, before we get to our story, let's sing our song of the day one more time. Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. 
because I have decided to follow Jesus. Following the instructions in the Bible is to follow Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the instructions that you give us in your Bible. I pray that all the boys and girls follow these instructions because you know what's best for us. Keep us safe. Mom, Dad, and all the boys and girls, help us to learn more about you in our lesson today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our Kids Connection program, kids. Next week, Mr. Zorik is going to be here and he's going to lead the Kids Connection program. But I have some announcements to make. The first one is that today, our worship service in our church is going to be by Zoom. Yes, by Zoom. Pastor James, Pastor Ben, Pastor Linda, and Pastor Lauren, they are all going to be live on Zoom. And they're going to talk to people. And everyone is going to participate. Mom, dad, grandpas, grandmas, aunts, uncles, everybody. Now, something very special, boys and girls. I am going to be there too. Yes. Johnny is going to participate in our program today. You are going to have a special part there too. So ask mom and dad that you want to meet Johnny in our worship service Zoom today. Just go to graceunconditional.com online worship service and click on the Zoom link at 11 o'clock so we can be a part of our worship service together and you will have a chance to talk to me live in our zoom worship today at 11 o'clock <sighs> i hope to see you in zoom okay now our friend kid is going to visit some kids this afternoon mr zorik is going to take him and make a couple of stops today. We will show you some of the clips next week of his visit to some kids this afternoon. Okay, so come back next week and watch kids visit some kids. Okay? Do you like happy birthday parties? I love happy birthday parties. And I love when people, when people sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you! Yes, I love birthdays. And this week, we have a special birthday celebration. Miss Teresa, the Tiny Tots teacher, is having a birthday this week. Don't forget to give her a call and wish her a happy birthday. And if you are having a birthday, send us an email and let us know so we can to wish you a happy birthday. VD Kids Connection at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you so much for participating in our Kids Connection. And I will see you guys some other time. Tune in again next week for another Kids Connection program with Mr. Zori. Until then, God bless you all. Bye bye. I'll see you kids at 11 o'clock worship on Zoom. Bye bye. I'll see you soon. Bye. Well, good morning, boys and girls. We're glad to see you here today. I hope you had a good week. I would like to sing our good morning song. I haven't sung it in a really long time. Would you see if you can sing it with me? It goes like this. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. This happy Sabbath day. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. This happy Sabbath day. Well, I'm so glad.
glad to see you all today. I would like to welcome a few of you today. And I would like to welcome Sky and Paul, Ethan and Ellis. Hi guys. Sunny, Rio and Gia, Amy and Camden, Reese, happy birthday Reese this month. I'd like to welcome Sammy and Carlina, Tyel and Aiden, Vida, Max. I'd like to also welcome Caitlin, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, Estella, Jax and Janie. And I'd also like to welcome Jade and Josiah. Josiah, happy birthday. Nicholas, Federico, Francisco, Will and Mia, welcome. I'd like to welcome Andrea, Joshua, Joy and Jael, Luke and John, Cody, Benjamin, Elia and Ethan, JR and Seth, and Zori and the new baby. Welcome everybody, I hope you have a good time today. Well, boys and girls, how many of you like to play games? This is a game called Scrabble Junior, and I brought this from my house. It's very bright and colorful. It's to help children learn how to spell. Now, every game comes with a set of directions, sometimes just a piece of paper, or sometimes it might be printed on the box. This one has a piece of paper, and it tells you exactly how to play the game. It tells you to choose which one you would like. You could have that letter sprinter, the word surfer, the DJ word, or the wacky wordy. And you choose one of those, and then you spell the words that go with your color. Now, what if you were playing this game with your friends and they did not want to play according to the rules? What if somebody said, oh, you don't get a turn this time. I get to take two turns. Would you be happy about that? Or what if your friend said, I don't want this token anymore. I want that one instead. And that one is close to the finish line. So I win, yay! Would you be happy about that? I don't think you would. You would not be very happy if your friends did not follow the rules. Now, God has given us something to help us follow the rules. And it is called the Holy Bible. He wants us to follow what he has asked us to do because he knows what is best for us and what will make us happy. Well, if you remember, the last two weeks we've been talking about Paul. Paul is a follower of Jesus, but before he became Paul, he was Saul, and he would go around trying to find the people that followed Jesus so that he could kill them. And on the road to Damascus, Jesus talked to him and asked him, why are you persecuting me? And he became Paul instead of Saul and he wrote letters to all the believers. He had written a letter to the believers in Thessalonica. And when they received the letter, they would read it and then they would send it on to other churches so that they could read it too. Now in, Thess in Thessalonica, they read a passage from the letter that said this, and this comes from 1 Thessalonians 5, 13 and 14. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, to warn those who are idle, to encourage the timid, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. Now, what did that say? That said, have respect for God's workers and live in peace with each other and have patience with each other. And then Paul goes on to say in verses 15 through 16, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He's giving us directions on how we can follow Jesus and be like Jesus. Paul wanted the people who loved Jesus in Thessalonica to remember what he had told them. He had said that they should get along with each other. Is it easy to get along with each other? No, sometimes it's not. A lot of people fight. 
And we don't like to fight, but sometimes even the people that follow Jesus fight with each other. We can learn a lot from what Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, though. Paul told the Thessalonians to lift up the people who worked hard and tell them that you appreciate what a good job they're doing and how hard they work. He said that the believers should all be working and doing their part. And if some of them were not doing their part, we should try to help them to know what they should do. If they are not doing what we think is right, we can try to help them and teach them. We should always be kind and gentle while we do this. We should be patient with them. We all have things that we could be better at. And if someone tries to help us and show us what we should be doing, we should listen to them and not get angry. The words written by Paul are instructions from God on how to grow our relationship with Jesus as well as with the other believers. It was important for the Thessalonians to hear these words. It's just as important for us now. We need to live in peace with each other. And we do that by listening and reading and studying God's word. Now this week, we're going to learn how to walk or live as God wants us to live. We should live our lives so that our thoughts, words, and actions are pleasing to God. Well, there's no way that we can do all of these things all the time without the Holy Spirit's help. And God has sent his Holy Spirit to help us. Sometimes we will get it wrong, but we have to be willing to say, I made a bad choice, and people will be able to forgive us. If we all work to get along with each other, how can we ever get into any big fights? We can't, because we all want to please God. Paul wanted the believers to love one another and be friends and help one another walk as Jesus wanted them to walk. He would have wanted those same things for us too, now we're going to talk about a game that will help us to review the things that are similar to the things Paul might have told the Thessalonians. I'm going to read some things and you tell me what you think about them. You think about them for a couple minutes. You can tell your mommy or daddy or you can tell your brother or sister. You were nice to a little kid and you get to move ahead two spaces. Do you think it's good to be nice to other little kids? Yes, it is. You were smiling and happy even on a rainy day. You had such a good time. Do you think that's a good thing to do? You were playing ball with your friends and you didn't get impatient. You did good. Or, hmm, you obeyed the Holy Spirit and walked away from temptation. Sometimes we're tempted to take what's not ours. Sometimes we're tempted to yell at our mommy and daddy or our brothers and sisters. But if you listen to what the Holy Spirit says, you won't do those things. You thanked your mom for dinner. That's so nice. I bet she would love to hear that. And you opened the door for someone. Oh, that's very nice. Give yourself a hand. Well, you prayed before meals. That's good. Let's see. Oh my. You lost your temper at school. Was that a good one? No, I don't think so. And you yelled at your little brother. That's kind of sad. Sometimes we make fun of others. We get lazy and don't want to do our homework or we complain. But those are things that you can make choices about. You don't have to do those things. Here's another one. You were nice to a little kid again. Move ahead two spaces. You can go on the website for our Sabbath school lessons and get these pieces for the game and play a game with your mommy and daddy. You can line up and when you do something good, you can take two spaces forward. If you do something naughty, you can take two steps back. It is good to follow God's instructions and God made sure that these instructions that he had given to Paul and that Paul had sent to the Thessalonians were recorded in the Bible so that we can read them and learn how to live for ourselves. But if we don't read God's word, it's hard for us to know what it says. 
We must do more than just read the words from the Bible, though. If you just read it like a storybook and don't change your life, that's not pleasing to God. He wants it to change you. When we read God's word, we should ask ourselves, what can we learn from these verses? Is there some here I need to obey? Or is there a good example for me to follow? You can pray and ask God to help you learn from his word and to do what you have learned. Paul wrote this letter to people in Thessalonica to give them encouragement. He wanted them to be encouraged to do the right thing. He wanted them to live in peace. He wanted them to get along with everyone. He wanted them to be joyful and to pray always and give thanks to God for all the things that he did for them. We can pray and be joyful too. Paul wrote these instructions that God gave him and God gives them to us also. When we are joyful and kind and patient to others and God is helping us live in the right way, God is praised. When we do good things so that God is praised, we are walking worthy of God. Now remember, to walk with God means to live a life for God. Now I want you to take a look at these two Bibles. They're both Bibles. All the words were written by God, and they both say Holy Bible on them. Which one do you like better? They both teach the same thing, but I think I like this one better. Shall I tell you why? Take a look at this one. This one is pretty brand new. Not very many people have looked at this one, even though it's just as good as the other one. Now this Bible has had people reading it. Some of the edges are worn off. The paper inside has kind of been used a lot. And somebody has underlined words in the Bible. I think that shows that somebody has used this Bible. If you have a Bible at home that looks brand new, you should take it out and start reading it and looking at it every day because God wants to see you with a worn out Bible. God made us and he knows the very best way for us to live. God gave us the Bible to help us to know the way, but we must open it and read it and do what it says, not just once a week on Sabbath, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days a week, every day. Mommy or daddy can read you a verse if you can't read yet, and then you can think about it. Think what it means every day. Each morning when you get up, you can read a verse or have mommy or daddy or brother or sister read something to you and think about it throughout the day. Well, I want you to remember what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, to live in peace with each other, be patient with each other, be joyful and pray always, give thanks to God in everything you do. Now let's go ahead and do our memory verse. Are you ready? I want you to put your fingers like this. Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. Let's try that again. That comes from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. Now let's try it again your fingers like this. Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. Try it one more time with me, okay? Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his 
glorious kingdom. That comes from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. All right, we're going to do that one more week. Well, maybe two more weeks, I think. Bow your heads with me and let's say a little prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. Help us to remember to be joyful, to be patient, to pray always, and to love you. Amen. Now, our craft today is a little book. And parents, all you need is a piece of construction paper and some typing paper on the inside. I cut these in half to make them a little bit smaller, but you can make bigger ones if you want to. On the first page, it says, live in peace with each other. You can write that on there and draw a little picture or just draw a picture if you want. And then this one says, be patient with each other. And be joyful and pray always. You could draw a picture of a praying child. And this page says, give God thanks in everything you do. And you could draw some things on here that you were thankful for this week. I hope you had a good time. I will see you next week. Goodbye.